In today's video, we're going to look at another one of my Russian uh, meters. Uh, this is the DP5V, and it was the last of the, the DP5 range of meters after the DP5A and the DP5B. Uh, they were introduced in around about 1986, just in time for Chernobyl, and uh, they would have been used uh, during the liquidation process there. The meter itself uh, runs in three 1.5 volt batteries. It has an internal backlight, and the range goes from 0 to 5,000 millironcan, and then 0 to 200 ronken. So it does a very, very, you know, it's a pretty bit high range. So you can use it for background radiation. You can use it for a bit of pro prospecting if you want to go and find a bit of pitch blend. And then you can also use it during a nuclear war if, if needs be. Uh, it all comes in this full leather case. Um, you've got a fold down section at the bottom here and that contains uh, your batteries, your spare batteries and then also the comp battery compartment which I'll show you in a few minutes. And then on the side we've got uh, another little clip and that reveals where you keep the probe and I'll show you all that in a minute as well. Uh, lovely compact little unit. Uh, we've got carry strap. Usually if you buy them, you can either buy them loose like this um, or you can buy them with all the optional accessories and with the wooden case as well. I bought mine loose um, along with the strap, headphones and uh, the probe rod and uh, I'll go into a bit more detail about that in a few seconds. And uh, first, we're going to open up the bottom and show you about the batteries. Okay, so the battery compartment is on the bottom of the unit. Um, you've got this uh, screw here that you undo and underneath is the batteries. Uh, we've got three 1.5 volt batteries and they are an odd size and you can't get them really, the, the, the original Russian ones. Um, closest to them in the UK it comes in a pack of three and it's called an LR12. Now it comes inside a plastic case and if you crack open the plastic case you'll have three of these batteries and if you remove them they are the exact match uh, for your battery compartment. If you don't want to do that uh, you can make adapters and that's what I've done here. Um, I have made these cardboard adapters which are exactly the same size as the original batteries and then I can just put my own AA batteries into them and that uh, that gives me the power for the meter. So there's two batteries to power the meter and then there's one battery to power the, uh, the internal light and I have done a bit of modification. One of my bulbs was blown and I just couldn't get a 1 volt uh, bulb anywhere. Um, I can get 1.1 volt bulbs and 1.2 volts and 1.5 volts. But even a 1.1 volt bulb, just they won't light with a 1 volt battery, two of them. So what I did was I put two 1.5 volts into it and then put a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery into it. And uh, made another, again, another adapter. And that means that now I can run two 1.5 volt batteries at full brightness and it gives off a really, you know, the bulb is really, really bright in there now. But that's the battery situation. Very, very okay, straightforward. We're back on the uh, proper side again and I'll just show you the backlight very, very quickly, the modification that I made to it. You can see it's a lot brighter. They are proper incandescent bulbs, little 1.5 volt miniature bulbs. And uh, as you can see, they do light up a lot faster. And uh, the original 1.1 or the one volt bulbs, they would take a while to sort of get the power from the, the 1.5 volt battery, the two of them, and you'd find one would very, very slowly warm up, but the other one would just would sort of burn away brightly. But this uh, one just sort of instantaneously comes on, which is nice. And you can see the fluorescent display that this has in the back. In fact, if I grab a UV torch, you can see the... Uh, the fluorescent display. Now that's not a radium dial, it's just a normal fluorescent display and it's quite nice at night that uh, you can have that lighting up like that and it looks nice. But if I turn the unit on, this is the battery test. So we turn on the battery test and it should go up to uh, halfway between two and three, which it is. And then we turn it right the way around to the first scale, which is 0 0.1 millironcan. And then with the probe, where the probe is, it does beta and gamma, and you can see the SBM20 tube in there. There's two tubes in here, high range, and then the uh, sort of low and medium range. And then inside here is a check source. So at the moment it's on beta, change it to here. We're now on gamma mode, so it's blocking the beta. And then if we turn it around again, we're on the check source. And what I'll show you is, if I do the display here, if I turn it around onto the check source, you can see that immediately it goes off the scale. And then I'll turn the check source off. And then I will reset it, pressing this button here. 
and then you can see we're, we're back on zero and then that'll go right up to uh, multiplied by 10 um, the check source will work now that's the basic operation and if you want to want to buy one that's really all you're really looking out for with the case wise condition of the case things like that now the probe if you want the check source what some sellers will do and you have to keep an eye out for it is that they will remove the check source. So to undo that, you undo that screw, take off the top, take out the spring, take off this little collar, and then the check source and the shield is removed. So keep an eye out on a listing that this is in place. If it isn't, ask where it is, ask if you can have one with the check source. And also if it does come with it, make sure the check source is inside it. You can see it's encapsulated in here in some resin and the little ingot with the Strontium 90 check source is inside that. And then to put it all back together, just make sure that the uh, little tab there is down. Put on the collar, put on the spring, put on the top, and that all compresses down. And then the screw just goes back in. Now it doesn't have to be tight, you know, hand tight is, uh, is perfectly fine. Just make sure you don't lose any of the screws or anything. There's a little tiny washer on it and that just screws in. Now there are a couple of different types of probe. There's one that looks very very similar to this uh, but it's got plastic, plastic top, green plastic top and green plastic bottom and it, it doesn't have the check source. So just be aware that if you're buying it sometimes you will not get the check source depending on the probe you have. Try to get this probe, try to get the one that comes with the check source and the, uh, the rotating uh, shield. Now, as well as that, I showed the probe rods. Now, there's, there's two different types of probe rods. There's this version here, and then there's this clamp version. And the one you want for the DP5V is this one. And the reason for that is that on the bottom of the DP5V, you hopefully can see the two little uh, nubs there. The reason for that is this goes on like this. It engages those two little sockets and then it turns and that gives you your probe rod you know so it's facing the ground or facing whatever it is you want to take uh, a radiation reading off so that works and so problem with that is that if you get the wrong type of rod uh, you simply won't be able to attach it there's just there's no way that this attaches to the bottom um, on the DP5A and the DP5B uh, it actually comes with a removable handle here uh, that you can push in click and pull around and that is meant to be going around the AMB so that is the wrong rod to go with this probe so just keep an eye out as well that you're getting the right uh, probe rod and then you'll get a set of headphones as well and uh, they plug in on the side here there's two holes there for the headphones to plug in and uh, I'll play the uh, the noise that the guy behind the makes in the background um, just so you can hear what uh, what that sounds like so really really good meter um you'll pick one up for less than 100 quid um and that'll be posted as well to the uk um if you want the box you'll be able to pen a lot more than that the box is quite big and quite bulky um i got this from ukraine took about 10 days to get here uh, and you know perfect service i got mine on etsy um or etsy depending what way you want to say it um, but you'll get them on ebay as well and uh, I should hopefully be getting a, a DP5A soon. Um, obviously with everything going on in the world at the moment, uh, international parcels is taking a while. So it's been about 13 days since my uh, mine was posted. So fingers crossed to get it soon. And um, I'll do a little review and buyer's guide in one of those as well. But until next time, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye bye.